<clears throat> we're going to look at uh, the movies application a little closer. So far, we've been generating the code and it worked and we were happy. All right. Uh, we need to, to understand it better than that, though, than just trusting that it will work. Because there's always a chance that things could go wrong and understanding the code will help you out, especially when you want to deviate from the sort of path of least resistance. So scaffolded pages that are created are very much uh, very basic, simplistic functionality. And there are often the times where you want more extensive functionality in, in applications, in which case you need to know what's going on to be able to uh, edit and, and create programs the way you want them to be. The other thing is don't blame the tool if it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, don't say that's what it generated. Figure out what's wrong. So what I'm going to do is we looked at or we have this movie application. And I'm going to look at, we're going to start out looking at add. We're going to go through add, uh, edit, delete, maybe details. We're definitely going to spend some time on the index. So let's look at create first of all. And create in our CSHTML file. Always going to start looking with the with the code behind. We have this movie object. One thing that's important to keep in mind when you're viewing this is are you talking about one thing or are you talking about a list of things? So when we're talking about creating a movie, we're talking about creating a movie, one movie. So we're going to have as an attribute of our code behind a movie object. In other cases, for example, the initial list where we're showing a list of all the movies in the, in the table, we're going to be displaying a list of things. So that's important to sort of distinguish right off the bat. Uh, The CSHTML page is tied because this says find property. So this is connected with the CSHTML page. And we identify that this label for movie title, input ASP4 movie title, that's what's going to fill in those properties in that object that we have created. So that's what connects those two things together by reference them by the column name. All right. When we add it, really not much happens. It's on the post because we uh, we this is a post method form form method post. So the on post back method gets called. And all we're doing is to the database, we are adding to the, to the list of movies, to the context list of movies, we're adding that movie. That's kind of a mouthful and it's kind of confusing because it uses movie several times. What this is, is this is the movie that we have created through our GUI and have stored in this object here. Context movie is a list of movies that the database maintains. It's the database table, in other words. It sort of maps to the database table. In fact, if you look at this context, you'll see that there is associated with the context a movie. That's what we're adding our movie object to. We're adding it to this guy right here. And that's pretty much it. We saw last time when we had a validation error that if something goes wrong, uh, this model state will be invalid and it's not going to return to the list. It's not going to try to add it. It will just continue on. These use auto number keys, so you won't run into a chance of a duplicate key. You could, however, run into other database constraints being violated. For example, um, what would be a good example of that? If you, um, 
if you had a foreign key constraint, you know, if, for example, you know, and you should never do this, but if you allowed someone to enter the ID of a table, you should have a drop down. But if you allowed someone to enter the ID of a table and, uh, to a related table and it couldn't find that, it would throw an error on this. But we're going to throw our coding, prevent that from happening. All right. Details and edit are similar. We look at details and edit. Pretty much the same. The only difference be between the two is that details has simply the data displayed, where edit has the data displayed in forms. And of course, with edit, we can save it, and with details, we don't really need to save it. So if we look at the code behind here, We're retrieving a movie. Look at the code behind for the edit. We're also retrieving a movie, same logic. Because if we're just displaying a movie versus editing it, the first step is just to display the contents of the movie. Now the extra stuff gets happen, happens in the edit when you press submit. Again, it's a post method and you're submitting to the on post uh, event. This is on get, by the way, this is when the page initially loads. So if we were to click this from from uh, the menu, either our menu or from the index page, we would get that. Uh, when first we do is retrieve it. Now, with a with an edit is even a little different than an ad. With an ad, we don't have an ID, right? When we go to add it, We're just adding something and it will get generated an ID number. With edits, we need to specify the ID we want to edit. So, here real quick. So we go to add, nothing on the query string. The URL simply says movie slash create. Because we don't know what ID it's going to get until we. And there it is. When we go to edit it. We could potentially have a list of things. Let's add another one. So, if we go right to the edit page, we have to tell it which edit page, which item we want to we want to do that, and we do that by passing as part of the query string the ID. We're going to come back around to the uh, listings page, the index page, uh, but for now, notice that when I hover over there on the very bottom left corner of the screen. It says it's calling movies slash edit question mark ID equals one. If I want to edit Star Wars, ID equals two. And we click on one to edit. Again, that ID is passed on the query string because we want to edit a particular one. So that's why the ad does not have uh, an ID on the query string because we're adding it and the ID is being generated. Edit though, we have to specify the ID. And again, you specify the primary key. That's the way to identify rows in a database. So, here 
There's no on get, by the way, on the add because we're adding, we're starting off with a blank for fields. All right. That's why there was no need to do any retrieving when we go to add. In this case, though, we're going to add, first of all, we look to see if uh, there is nothing in the ID field. This indicates that it might get passed with a query string value called an ID. If that is null, or if there's something wrong with the list of movies, that is, there is no movies. There are no movies. It's going to return not found. Makes sense, right? If we say if the, that list of movies in the context is empty and we go to, we want to edit one, well, that list is empty. We can't edit anything. And likewise, if the ID is missing, it's going to return not found. We could see uh, we could see that by typing in an ID and, and running it. Otherwise, what it's going to do is it's going to do a query. And this is the language link, L-I-N-Q. And we'll see more of that uh, later today. Uh, but it's the manner in which we query the database. We don't directly use SQL. Uh, there's advantages to doing it this way. And I'll probably talk about those uh, in a little bit. But anyhow, what we're doing is from the database's list of movies, give me the first or default. And what is this? This is actually a where clause. This is saying, give me movies, give me a movie where the movie ID matches the ID that got passed in. So in other words, if we clicked on one, this is going to pull up movie with an ID of one out of the list of movies that are in the database context. If that doesn't exist, then we also have an error. And finally, if we do find something, we set the movie object equal to the thing that we just retrieved and return the page. We'll notice virtually the same logic in the delete. Anytime we need to pull up one of something, we're going to have logic like this. And when they click submit, make sure that the state is valid. Say that the database is, uh, is in the process of being modified. Try to save the changes asynchronously. If the movie doesn't exist, then return not found. Otherwise, throw an exception. And Deciding if the movie exists or not, we look to see if there are any movies that the movie ID matches the ID. This code is in there for that very small chance that in between the time we pull up a, a, a row uh, on the screen, someone went and deleted it on us. Not likely, but possible. And we code for that. All right, delete is going to be very similar to this. Let me close some of these things. Delete is going to be similar to that. We have these similar to the details page. And now we don't have forms, we have just data items. And we retrieve it the same way that we retrieve it, both for the edit and for the details. Oh, I'm looking at the details. I was going to say, where's the delete statement? All right, we look to make sure that we can find it so it's displayed on the screen. We then go in and see. If the, if the ID is null or the list of 
uh, movies in the database is null. We perform not found. We find it. And if it's not null, we execute the movie command, the remove command to remove that movie. And then we redirect back to the page. This code is a little different than code that you may have done before, especially when we get into the Lambda expressions. Like this, it takes a little practice to get used to it. And, uh, you know, all I can say is it will come with time. Spend some time reviewing these in more detail. Review them like I went through to make sure you understand it. If you're ever in doubt on how something works, put the debug on. We talked about the debugger last time. Put the debugger on and run it and let and follow through, trace through the instructions that get called, and you can you can look at the variables and see the status of them and so on. All right. Now on to the main event. Let's go what we're gonna spend most of the time talking about the listing. The listing again displays everything, and I added to that the search capability. So when we run this, um, on get, we don't do anything. We just retrieve all of them. But we can limit down and filter out where we can say, give me everything that is less than or equal to $14. So if we click submit, it just gives us that one. We could say, give me everything that's greater than or equal to $15. And it'll display that one. We type in something that doesn't exist, greater than or equal to $100, we get an empty list. This is similar, but a little different than the search that you put on the movies. All right, let's look at how this works. We're going to start with the code, the code file, the, the page model. I should use the right terms. Code behind is an old fashioned term. This is the page model. Now notice here. We have, and I don't, well, I guess it's okay. Uh, in this one, we are pulling up a list of movies. All right. We're not pulling up just an individual movie. Therefore, we're not going to declare a, an individual movie. We're going to uh, declare an I list of movies as a property. We're binding this property, supports get equals true. That's another way to link the query string with uh, th these variables, rather, with the values from the query string. Interestingly enough, this doesn't use the on post, which we could write it to do that instead but it uses the on get. Let's see how this works. All right, we have an error message that we initialize to nothing. We pull all the movies in the movie context. This is a link expression. Link stands for uh, a, a link stands for uh, language integrated queries, I think. Language integrated queries. What that means is in, in the old days, you wrote your SQL statements in giant strings. So if I wanted to pull everything from the movie table in the old days, I'd do something like this. I'd create a SQL statement that says, Select star 
from movies. Now here's the problem with that. At some point we would call a database object to go and execute that query. When we execute that query, because it's a simple string, you can put anything you want in there, right? I could spell movies wrong. I could put in my address in there instead of a SQL statement. I could do just about anything, which means that you wouldn't tell necessarily that something is wrong at compile time. All right. There's two kinds of errors that you can, you can run into. Uh, there's compile time and runtime errors. Compile times are the better ones to get because you can look at them as you're developing it and see there's a problem and correct it. Whereas if I had code that created a, uh, a query in a string, I could maybe mess up and say, where ID equals and leave off a value. The compiler doesn't know at compile time that that's an invalid statement. It just knows it's a string. String, you can have anything in. When you go and execute it is when it blows up. Now, the problem with that is that most of the kind of runtime errors that you get like this aren't like obvious ones like this. They happen when you have a special set of circumstances. When you go and search by this plus this plus this and you want it descending or something like that. That the query string, uh, query string not like on, on a web page, but the string that contains the SQL query uh, gets formed and it gets formed incorrectly. And that only comes up under certain conditions. All right. Therefore, that's bad. And on a website, if something blows up, what do you do? Do you report the error to the person? Or do you just say, well, I guess I'm going to go buy from someone else. Oftentimes people are just going to just leave it. Now, if they have a good system, it probably will log errors like that so that they can be reviewed and, and corrected. But it's bad because again, they pop up and it might be a while before you actually hear that those errors are occurring. These queries, however, are integrated with the language. This says I want to pull from the list of movies. I want to pull every, I want to pull and store an M in the movie context. Give me that movie. For each movie, in the movie context, I want that movie. Now, what if I type movie wrong? It's, a, it's a, uh, an error, all right? It's a syntax error. Because in the database context, there's nothing called M-O-V-I. Now, if we did that in our paint example, we spelled movie wrong. You'd only know when you went to run it, that that is incorrect. So this is integrated with the language. We can get that error immediately, and we know that there's something wrong with it. This is simply giving us, that didn't go right. This is simply from the list of movies, it's giving me every movie. So movies, movie and that variable movie which is a list gets set to this movies list converted into a list and if there's some ex uh, ex exception it, it displays it as an invalid entry So now we have in movie, I realize I didn't scaffold this. Well, I scaffolded it, I didn't write it. Movie is actually a list of movies. Now we're gonna loop through that list and display all the items on the page. 
So we have our form up here. Method is get. We're going to pull from the model pull from the model from the movie object within the model row zero all right because it's going to have a list of movies so we're going to pull the title of the field from row zero now it doesn't matter which row that we pull from right because everyone has the same time every every one of those fields has the same title but we always know there's going to be a row zero in it uh if not actually it doesn't display the page i don't think if i remember that code so we do this and create a table header for the title, release date, genre, price, and I have director here, but I didn't actually change it to add director. So that gives us this header line of the table. We then iterate through. We only do this, by the way, if that is not a null list. We iterate through for each item in that movie list, in the model's movie list, loop through, and for that item, I'm gonna pull the title, release date, and genre, price, and director, if there is one. This is where we pass the query, uh, on the query string to those other pages, the edit, details, and delete the item ID. So that's what creates the, on the query string, the ID that we're gonna to pass to the edit page or the details page or the delete page. All right. Now let's look at the, actually the search code, because we kind of blew past that before. It's looking to see if the search string, and where is the search string? Search string is this field. It's making sure that if it's not null or empty, so we have something in the search string. We look on the search type variable, which again, we bound that property and we say that it supports get, so that will be posted on the, uh, in this variable, the value from the, carry, the query string. If search type equals LE, then we do this. We add a where clause. The where clause is where we take and we evaluate this expression for each movie. Is the price less than or equal to decimal parse search string? If it's not, then it must be greater than or equal to, and we do is for each row, is the price greater than or equal to the search string? We'll see more and more examples of this, of the link. And essentially the way it works when you do a link query is we're working with lists. This starts out by giving me a list that contains everything. This goes and does something to that list. What does it do to the list? It, it, it whittles it down, it filters it. It filters it based on this criteria or this criteria. And when we're done, regardless of what we get here, we take that list uh, and put it in that movie variable that the um, the, the razor page can use and access. So if we were to add a sort to in this example, we would look to see what the link expression is to sort something. Now I have in Canvas some resources for you to review. Link and Lambda expressions. Lambda expressions are when we have 
essentially they're anonymous functions that contain expressions or sequence of operators. A lambda expression takes one or more parameter, that's what this is, the parameter, and returns a value based on this expre expression. So let's look at our example. This where takes a parameter. What is What parameter is it? It's a row from that movie, movies list, and returns this. So this will return a true if it's to be selected, a false if it's not to be selected. That's how the where clause works. True means it's in, false means it's out. It's a little confusing to see this variable s use. Where does that come from? Well, that represents each movie when we do expressions like this. You can even see when we hover this, that parameter s is a movie because it's a member of that movie's list that we've retrieved a minute ago up here. And this shows a number of examples. If we have a list of animals, we can find all the animals, find all expression returns a true, this, the expression in here returns either a true or false. It's gonna look at each item in that list and it's going to, for each item, it's gonna to look to see if it starts with a B. And if it does, it's true. And if it's false, if it doesn't start with B, it's not, and it'll display the name of the animal. So this will, uh, this will uh, return beaver and bear. You can do the same thing for objects and so forth. Another thing that is powerful about link is link can be used not just for database access. Here we're just working with a list that we have, you know, and it can be a list of objects, it can be many different formats you can do queries with using link. Now there's two forms of the syntax of link. There is the, uh, let, me, let me get the exact names right. There's the, there's the method approach and there is the query approach. The query approach looks like SQL statements. For example, this line here uses operators very similar to the operators that you'd find in a SQL statement. It's not exactly the same, but it's very similar to that. The word select, the from clause, and so on. The method takes a different approach and it calls methods like this. There's a first method for each list that will give us the first category on the list. And you can see here, we're actually mixing those things. This inner part is the, uh, the query method where it looks like SQL queries. And this is a method that we're calling. Here's a link tutorial that goes over in more detail some of the things that we talked about. Uniform query syntax, we can query anything, XML documents, SQL databases, a collection in memory. We can query them using the same syntax. Strongly type, which means you get compile errors. Minimizing run errors. And you can use a SQL-like syntax, which is helpful for many developers who spent years working on SQL.
Let's look at the where clause. We're doing a where, and there is where clause in query mode is written like this. The where clause in method version is written like this. My suggestion is to use the methods because you probably don't have years of experience in writing SQL, so it's not like you have to get out of that habit. Uh, and if we use this, I think that is a little clearer. We're taking the list and we're filtering out based on this check num function is true or false. Query syntax versus method syntax. This talks about it a little bit. And it shows really the difference. This is using the query syntax because it looks like a SQL query. From n in numbers, where number divided by or modulo, uh, modulus three is equal to zero, select n times two. Whereas here we take, uh, Pulling from the numbers list where this is true, and then we're outputting that. Um, for some reason, most developers, including myself, feel much more comfortable with the method syntax. I certainly am. Uh, and again, the query syntax is sort of, in a way, the worst of both worlds, in my opinion, because it looks like SQL, but it's not SQL. So you have to learn some new instructions. Well, if you're going to learn new instructions, you might as well learn these query instructions. But um, method is not always better, and they give some uh, instances where they think it is uh, better, uh, multiple data sources and so on. Again, the whole idea of this is we start with a list that's usually going to come from a table in a database, then we apply a series of operations. Sure. Yes. Can I ask about why is it that we don't use M as object move for like the syntax for where is price would be this? Why is not why can we not use M instead, instead of making an S? We, we could, but you don't have to. Uh, M is simple, movies that where this gets simply a stream of all the elements that are in that movies list. And we could call them anything so long as we call them the same thing over here. Do it just for the heck of it to make sure I'm not lying. I don't think it would matter that we used M up here. It still works either way. So it doesn't matter. You know, think of this as a pipeline where each fun each function in there does some operation. Like a local. Yeah, yeah. 
that just represents the arguments that it's going to get. And what arguments does it get? Well, the where this movies is going to pump a list of individual movies to it. So M is simply an individual movie. So yeah, it was a good analogy. It's like it's like the argument name. So you can call the argument name anything. In other words, this M has nothing to do with this M up here. This is actually a case where we combine the two. This part of it is the SQL method or the query method, and this part is the uh, method method. Use the where method. Uh, doesn't matter to me which you use, if you get it done. All right. Uh, are there any questions for anyone? All right, uh, I will see you next week or see you in lab. Perfect.